Justin, we had some pretty big China news last week, and let's just talk about it a little. So basically, these Chinese companies or these uh, some Chinese banks were selling bonds. And now your average Joe is thinking, oh, yeah, they're selling bonds. The United States is going through hyperinflation. Jack Dorsey just said so. And everyone should be selling bonds and buying Bitcoin. And yes, maybe. But that is not why these entities are selling bonds. I would say we because there's a ton of dollar denominated debt outside of the United States and in the euro dollar system that is completely outside the track of the Fed or M2 money supply. And I would say many, many times more than than the dollars that we can actually quantify. If M2 is, I don't know how, how, how much M2 is, let's just call it $20 trillion. I have no clue. The entire dollar, dollar supply in the world, I would say is more likely over $60 trillion to $70, $70 trillion. And that is just a complete guess that I'm getting from people smarter than I, like Brent Johnson or Jeff Snyder. But, so let's go. Why is why is this why are these chinese banks selling bonds to get dollars why do they need dollars let's think about it a chinese bank they can issue dollar denominated debt they can issue loans to dollars so let's say evergrande what 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 just happened with evergrande they blew up and they they're missing their bond payments so evergrande ball, borrows from a bank in dollars and now on the balance sheet of the bank the loan is the asset and the dollars is the liability okay now, what happens if Evergrande, who has that liability, the bank liability inside of their account, transfers that money to another bank? Now, this bank that has, they have the loan on their asset, but they have to send an offsetting asset to the other bank because you're not just going to accept, say, a billion dollars worth of liability with no offsetting asset. You need something offsetting that. And these foreign banks are not like, United States, they're they're not like U.S. banks where they can just go to the Fed and get they, when they have plentiful reserves that they can pass off or have a ton of dollars on their balance sheet. So what are they doing? They're selling off those bonds to get dollars to push off onto the other banks' balance sheets. Can you uh, summarize that or just try and clear that up for me, Justin? Yeah, Josh. So let's go back to this because I think you're on the right path, but I think there's some structural things that aren't quite aligning. So let's go back over what you said. A bank will make a loan in a non-native currency. That would be like a Chinese bank making a loan in dollars, euro, whatever. And when they do that, the bank's issuing, should we say, think of it like a... Um, or uh, what would be a good example, like a Bank of China, IOU, USD, okay? So it might be the equivalent, let's say, like you or me writing a check for, let's say, $1,000. And Josh, if I give you that check for $1,000, I have essentially issued, and it's both on a personal level, if it's just me, an individual, giving you a check, an IOU for $1,000, or Justin Bank giving Josh Bank a check, or Justin Chinese Bank giving Josh Chinese Bank or whatever, right? And this is, I think, the disconnect on that front. You're absolutely right. When money transfers between any financial institution, or I guess any institution in general, there's got to be a credit to offset the debit. But at the same time, if the asset that is transfer, transferred itself is just the IOU and the IOU is never redeemed, you can kind of create an infinite float within the system. That's exactly what the ghost ledger is. And that's kind of how the system worked prior to 2008, because what happened when there were no reserves on any balance sheets? These, these entities were not setting off a one-to-one -one ratio. Yeah. They were just saying, oh, hey, Justin, I have a billion dollars worth of liabilities. You take that. Great. And I'm, I'm, I'm good for it. And Justin said, oh, yeah, you know what? You are good for it. I trust you. You're a trustworthy individual. I will take that. I'll take you up on that. Here, just oh, you, and, you and, owe and, me a billion hold dollars. On. And one really important thing, Justin might then turn around to Susie Smith or Patty Jane or whatever and say, oh, hey, listen, here's something I need to send to you. This is IOU from Josh, but Josh is good for it. You think Josh is good for it. So bam, here's the Josh note. So the point is yeah. your IOU that you originally issue ripples throughout this, just as mine will ripple throughout the system because banks trust each other. There's no contagion. Yes. But what happened with Evergrande, these Chinese, like we're seeing a lot more risk in China. So if you were a Chinese bank, would you be saying, all right, 
Justin, I know we've been doing this for so long and I know we normally just pass off these liabilities and that's fine. But right now, Hey, Evergreen's blowing up. I don't know who's good for it. I know you're good for it, but just prove me, prove to me that you're good for it. Uh, yeah. So just, just pass off, pass off the offsetting asset with the liability. And then, yeah. so I'm like, yeah. fuck, I don't, I don't have it. So what do I do? I have to sell off my, my, my bonds to get those dollars to pass off. Right. So the, the two things, so that would be like the equivalent of, let's say like it's you, me, uh, six of the, or, seven, or like a hundred of the random people. It'd be the equivalent of all of us writing checks to each other, but never cashing each other's checks and then trading each other's checks amongst ourselves while issuing new checks abroad. So what you're saying in that part is that's where the bank's going through and saying, no, 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 I actually want to cash the check. So that's the first thing in that regard. But the second thing is this, and this is what I can't figure out. And this is more like from like a, a more like the um, geopolitical angle is why on earth would a Chinese bank make a loan in dollars to a Chinese citizen? Like that, I, I just can't. No, I would say, I would say they're doing that to like Evergreen, like these big entities that are then building these houses and how do they build those houses? They need commodities. What those commodities, they need to buy them in dollars. Yeah, but so you know how you know how Gammon always makes a really big point about talking about non-bank and bank entities. That is like you know how many units yeah, of currency is still a non-bank entity, correct? But that is what the euro dollar system. Yeah, yeah, exactly. but no, 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 no. To tie out there, there's a really important distinction, and this is the intersection of geopolitics back into um, back into macro because macro is it, it's high up there, but it's always downstream of geopolitics. You have the trilemma: if China has a closed capital account. There's another dimension. So just like, you know, Gamma will talk about bank entities and non-bank entities, there is another level beyond that of a closed account and an open account. So in other words, if China keeps their capital account closed, it would be like the equivalent of having like a third party. So you have like a bank entity, a non-bank entity, but that like world itself exist in an even bigger world of a closed capital account. And so if you're in the big world of a closed capital account, my this is why i can't reconcile i can't wrap my mind around that internally but i certainly do think that the chinese banks need dollars because i think evergrand borrowed in dollars or issued i or spurred evergrand is on the hook to repay debt that is denominated in dollars but the debt is owed to people outside the closed capital account of china because if it was within china they could just kind of you know deal with it i suppose internally but it's outside china which means that they have to bring dollars in so those dollars can go back out if china failed to do that then the exchange rate would break this is this is the trilemma remember you can choose your but, okay well i'll give you a little pushback to that too and i i agree with everything that you're saying but i'll play devil's advocate so right now chinese exports are at all-time highs and what i mean uh what it, when chinese exports goods what do they get back they get dollars so their their dollar reserves are at an all-time high right now but that's that that i i believe yeah are there I, this is where i get a little fuzzy when they're exporting all these dollars and all these i mean when they're exporting all these goods and all these dollars are coming in are these bank liabilities or bank assets because if these are bank assets then that is very good for the fluctuation of of money in the banking system but if these are all new dollar liabilities then there's a big issue unless they're getting that offset in asset if the chinese capital account remains closed kind of what happens in china stays in china yeah i completely agree with that and so then it comes into this thing where if china has or back up. If China has corporations, high profile corporations like Evergrande, and Evergrande owes someone else outside of China something else besides Remimbi, so let's say dollars, somehow Evergrande has to get their hands on dollars or they're going to default or they have to give some other form of payment. But if people only want dollars, and I presume such people would only want dollars, particularly from Evergrande or Evergrande's um, ilk, you've got a problem. And as far as Chinese exports, true, that might be the case, but remember or, and like i don't know how to handicap this but this is a dimension you need to be aware of number one china just flat out lies on the numbers they will they kind of start i suspect but i don't know how to prove this they kind of start with saying what we want the numbers to be and they kind of back into that and secondly i would say look outside you know the various ports and look at the various shipping you know backups within the rule or within the world yeah they might be exporting at record rates but they're exporting to you know cargo ships that are moored off you know backed up ports you know across the world so I I think this is where it gets back into a paper tiger. Like I would not, oh, I, I don't know how to handicap it, Josh, but I, I would be very suspicious. 
if someone said China is exporting record amounts, I'd just be suspicious of that. The other thing I'd be very suspicious of is that China had a way to otherwise source dollars. Because I think China's much, much weaker when it comes to dollars than they than it's otherwise being let on. Back in the day, or when I say back in the day, that is before COVID, they would use Hong Kong as kind of a way to uh, bring in a foreign currency to do that. But um, that's, again, as I poorly understand it, that's also been um, shuttered. Anyways, again, Josh, here, here's what it boils down to. If the facts are presented are accurate, I agree with your thesis. Or your thesis makes logical sense to me, but I think there's this extra. Well, then, well what else? Why else would they be selling bonds? Because it is not. Oh, they need the, the dollar. They, they yes, need the dollars. Yes. And why do they need the dollars? They need the dollars because, for whatever odd reason, they've at least in the case of Evergrande, they've decided that Evergrande will continue to uh, honor. And when I say Evergrande, I maybe let me put it like this: they have decided that large China multinational, not even multi, large Chinese companies will honor for the time being, their foreign obligation. But here's the thing, right? If China has record exports and therefore has record dollar inflows, why are they selling bonds? They already have the dollars, do they not? Well, I would, I, I would, that's why I think it's a banking system issue. Well, hold on. Because the thing is like, if it, yeah, but like the thing is like, you, you, you can't use the same framework that you would use like for the rest of the world within China. Like you, you have to- well, yeah, for I, I would say you can when, when China intertwined with the rest of the world. If China is, is if, they're, if their banks are communicating with 50 banks outside of, the, outside of China, then they have to play by the rules that everyone else agrees upon. They might, but that would be only for outside the system. Within, see, here's the thing, right? If if Evergrande took out debt that was within China, and maybe maybe we're kind of saying the same thing. If Evergrande took out debt that was owed to Chinese citizenry, it would be. I, I strongly think it would be denominated in, in remaining. Yes, which yes. But it, but it, there they do. Uh, there is dollar denominated debt, and but but not owed. But, but but the thing is, the people who own it aren't Chinese citizens. The people who own it exist outside the Chinese system. That's the key thing. I would think. Yeah, it's right. uh, it's um it's tricky, and I'm not, I'm not I don't know the answer because this is not a question that has a definite answer. This is just speculation upon why these Chinese banks are selling bonds. I think it was a few billion worth, not a ridiculous amount, but they're still selling bonds and getting dollars. Yeah, no, I definitely they, they need dollars, so they're selling bonds. But here's the thing, right? If someone is also going to say. Chinese are having record dollar inflows because of record exports. My attitude, it's like, you know, we were talking about, you know, a few weeks ago with Bank of America, right? Banks have too much cash, yet banks are selling bonds to raise cash. Wait a minute, something's not adding up here. Like what's going on? Either they have or they do not have enough cash. Yeah.